Hello, my name is Lucas, this is Bit of Lit, and I have seen a tag, the My Favorite Penguin tag by um, Steve Donahue and I guess totally pretentious Lukash, uh, and they both happen to talk about the same book, and that would be uh, a book by Livy, and they both talked about uh, the Second Punic Wars, uh, according to Livy, and... I don't know anything about the man other than he was a Roman historian. Um, but from the sounds of it, even though he's not the most accurate, even though he was around during the Roman Empire, uh, it sounds like something I need to get to. And I, I want to. I will, I will try to get to it as soon as possible. Um, that said, um, it's the my favorite Penguin classic tag. And my favorite one, at least as far as the ones that I own currently uh, in China. I don't remember all the ones that I own in America, but I'm willing to bet that this will top them. I've read this book uh, twice this year. Uh, absolutely incredible. Brilliant writer, uh, Virginia Woolf's Mrs. Dalloway, which is uh, about a day in the life of Mrs. Dalloway. And um, I first read this six years ago, I believe, 2014, for a, in like, an introductory Victorian-era writing class, uh, which I know she's not part of the Victorians, but uh, this class was sort of, you know, it started with Jane Austen, who I believe, if I remember correctly, or maybe it didn't start with her, but the point of the class was to show where literary literary uh, traditions were before the Victorian era, era, how it evolved during the Victorian era, and what it evolved into uh, in the modernist era, to show that these things uh, develop over time with different cultural aspects and uh, political movements and these kind of things and what have you. Uh, it was a really good class. Uh, we read a bunch of books I absolutely did not understand, <laughs> um, and a lot of poems. Uh, now that I've read them, you know, Pride and Prejudice, it was my first time reading. Uh, Jane Austen at the time didn't understand it. I've read it again this year, absolutely amazing. I also read Emma this year, my first time reading that. Oh my gosh, <laughs> why have I not read everything by her? I have read Love and Friendship, but with the E and the I switched as well, but, um, yeah, I need to get on the Jane Austen bandwagon a little bit more because she's incredible. Uh, we read Charles Dickens' uh, Great Expectations, which um, I didn't get at the time. It is my favorite Dickens book now. I read it a couple times, and uh, it is the only one that I really like. <laughs> there are other moments in other books that I enjoy, but um, anyway. I think we also read Wuthering Heights and... Man, if there is a book to not understand, it is that one. Uh, but what topped them all in terms of me not understanding what was going on at that time in my readership was Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf. Uh, given that it's a you know stream of consciousness style of writing, I was not used to that at all. Could not comprehend what was going on. How is it making all these transitions? I mean... If you look, okay, sometimes we have these paragraph breaks here, right? Or, I think that's a paragraph. I mean, I don't know. Whatever this break is called, if it's not a paragraph break, I would assume this is a paragraph break. Anyway, it's just unrelenting. Uh, there is no chapter anything. <laughs> um, it just goes on and on. And, uh, you know, sometimes you have pages that are just like this, and a little difficult to read in that sense. Um, now that I've read it again twice this year, I recognize, you know, despite six years ago being in a class to discuss about, discuss the merits of it, um, I didn't get a lot out of it because I didn't understand the book. Now that I've read it a couple times, and I'll read a little bit of a passage, um, to give you a taste of it, I absolutely recommend this book. Um, now that I've read it a couple times again, this year especially, I see how brilliant she is, how in-depth 
she can get and like it's just amazing to me how she sort of extracted these moments from you know the inner psyche or whatever you want to say um it, it's just an incredible achievement i think uh in her writing um because it like i understand what happens in the book now uh, and you know sort of understand some thematic elements uh, and what you know virginia wolf is trying to get at in some way i'm sure there's still much more i can get out of it no doubt uh but I don't understand how she was able to <laughs> manu not manufacture, but like create this and like pull the thread on the human psyche and make weave something new with it. <laughs> like it's just mind blowing. Uh the inner workings of the mind of Clarissa Dalloway of uh of of Septimus Smith, of his wife, Lucrezia, of uh, Richard Dalloway a little bit, uh, Peter Walsh, all these characters, all these moments, especially when, you know, when you see them interact with each other, um, Peter Walsh and Mrs. Dalloway, they have this moment where they're talking with each other and about the past and the present and the future, and you just, it's, I don't, how I don't understand how she did it. I understand what's happening now. I just don't understand how she did it other than it is a work of genius. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, you know, every moment with uh, Dr. Holmes and Lucrezia and Septimus, just, I mean, it's so dark, uh, the s internal struggles that Septimus has uh, because he has PTSD and no way to no no way to uh, be able to handle it, uh, and yeah, just I don't I don't understand how this book exists. It's so brilliant. Okay, just go read it. Uh, I would like to read uh, a little bit of it. This is in near the beginning. Yeah, page fourteen. All right, um, which is why I was holding it there and I already showed you this page and this is after a um, motor car sort of stopped and made a loud noise <laughs> you know uh, the violent explosion which made Mrs. Dalloway jump and Miss Pym go to the window and apologize came from a motor car which had drawn to the side of the pavement precisely opposite Mulberry's shop window passers-by who of course stopped and stared had just time to see a face of the very greatest importance against the dove gray upholstery before a male hand drew the blind and there was nothing to be seen except a square of dove gray yet rumors were at once in circulation from the middle of bond street to oxford street on one side to atkinson's scent shop on the other passing invisibly inaudibly like a cloud swift veil like upon hills falling indeed with something of a cloud's sudden sobriety and stillness upon faces which a second before had been utterly disorderly. But now mystery had brushed them with her wing. They had heard the voice of authority. The spirit of religion was abroad with her eyes bandaged tight and her lips gaping wide. But nobody knew whose face had been seen. Was it the Prince of Wales, the Queen's, the Prime Minister's? Whose face was it? Nobody knew. Edgar J. Watkiss, with his roll of lead piping round his arm, said audibly, humor humorlessly, humorously, of course, so sorry, the Prime Minister's car. <laughs> I hope I said that right. Septimus Warren Smith, who found himself unable to pass, heard him. Septimus Warren Smith, aged about thirty, pale-faced, beak-nosed, wearing brown shoes and a shabby overcoat, with hazel eyes which had that look of apprehension in them which makes complete strangers apprehensive too. The world has raised its whip. Where will it descend? Everything had come to a standstill. The throb of the motor engine sounded like a pulse irregularly, drumming through an entire body. The sun became extraordinarily hot because the motor car had stopped outside Mulberry's shop window. Old ladies on the tops of omnibuses spread their black parasols. Here a green, here a red parasol opened with a little pop. 
Mrs. Dalloway, coming to the window with her arms full of sweet peas, looked out with her little pink face, pursed in inquiry. Everyone looked at the motor car. Septimus looked. Boys on bicycles sprang off, traffic accumulated, and there the motor car stood with drawn blinds and upon them a curious pattern like a tree, Septimus thought, and this gradual drawing together of everything to one centre before his eyes, as if some horror had come almost to the surface and was about to burst into flames, terrified him. The world wavered and quivered and threatened to burst into flames. It is I who am blocking the way, he thought. Was he not being looked at and pointed at? Was he not waited here, rooted to the pavement for a purpose? But for what purpose? Let us go on, Septimus, said his wife, a little woman with large eyes and a sallow, pointed face, an Italian girl. But Lucrezia herself could not help looking at the motor car and the tree pattern on the blinds. Was it the queen in there, the queen going shopping? The chauffeur, who had been opening something, turning something, shutting something, got on to the box. Come on, said Lucrezia. But her husband, for they had been married four or five years now, jumped, started, and said, All right, angrily, as if she had interrupted him. People must notice. People must see. People, she thought, looking at the crowd, staring at the motor car. The English people, with their children and their horses and their clothes, which she admired in a way. But they were people now, because Septimus, Sith, Septimus had said, I will kill myself. An awful thing to say. Suppose they had heard him, she looked at the crowd. Help, help, she wanted to cry out to the butcher's boy and women. Help, only last autumn she and Septimus had stood on the embankment, wrapped in the same cloak, and Septimus reading a paper instead of talking, she had snatched it from him and laughed in the old man's face who saw them. But failure one conceals. She must take him away into some park. And, uh, you know, at the very beginning of the book focuses on Mrs. Dalloway uh, and how she's going to go... Uh, get some flowers and then it starts to transition and we start following Septimus and then it starts to transition and goes to different characters all the time it's constantly moving around and getting into the inner thoughts we see this darkness uh, from Septimus so clearly uh, just hearing the bang from the car has rattled him and shook him and now he's fearful that everyone is watching him, everyone's looking at him, everyone's uh, out to get him, and, uh, you know, he has this idea that um, I'm going to kill myself, which is worrying for his wife, who does not understand him. And, uh, anyway, the, you know, the introduction is also great for understanding the, the context of this book. Of course, uh, I like it anyway. And uh, yeah, this is definitely not only the, my favorite book I've read this year, or reread, uh, but my favorite uh, Penguin classic. So thank you.